Welcome back. This is lunchtime. I want to give you some response now to our lead story. So let me just give you the background again. The South African Medical Research Council's COVID-19 lockdown clash with government has taken a new turn this afternoon. Here's some background. The council says the board has discussed the matter with its president, Professor Glenda Gray, and says it did not find transgressions of policies. The board says it will not be instituting any further investigation. After that statement, there was a second one that came out today from Professor Gray herself. She says that she wishes to thank the council's board for having acted with what she terms requisite urgency in its deliberations. Gray also says that she wants to reaffirm her commitment to the national effort against COVID-19, going on to say she remains at the disposal of the Minister of Health and the Ministerial Advisory Committee. Uh, Gray, as you know, has been at the forefront of a public spat between the health department and South African scientists over lockdown regulations. Earlier, she claimed the lockdown was unscientific. Later... She denied this. But the route today is soliciting a sharp response from an organization called the Academy of Science of South Africa. In a statement signed by, among others, the well-known Professor Barney Petiana, the body says it finds the council's actions in earlier calling for an investigation alarming and represents a violation of the constitutional right to academic freedom. One of those signatories, Professor Barney Petiana, now joins us uh, via Skype. Professor, good afternoon to you and uh, thank you. You go on to say that the Department of Health's Acting Director General, Dr. Anban Pele, and I quote you, abused the power of his office over calling for an investigation after Dr. Gray's assertions. In what way was there an abuse of power? Uh, Jeremy and listeners um, uh, and viewers, you know, it's a, it's a very alarming, quite frankly, a very Stalinist uh, approach to the use of power. The truth of the matter is that the minister has uh, addressed this matter. The minister has um, expressed her displeasure at some of the utterances. Uh, and that is a matter between the minister, frankly, and, and Professor Gray. And then, then the director general writes to the chairperson of the board of the Medical Research Council and almost directs them to investigate the matter. And then says in, 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 a, in a slate of hand kind of manner, please, there are other reports that I get uh, from within the MRC, which I think you should investigate. If you speak to me, I'll give you some more details. Now, that is totally unacceptable. The reason for us it's unacceptable, we're a body of uh, a prestige body of scientists in this country and, and uh, researchers and scholars. We, we do believe that uh, uh, it's important when, for that work to be done, for scientists to be accorded a degree of respect for their independence and their expertise, that this should be exercised without fear, uh, without intimidation, and indeed without humiliation. Uh, if this country is to benefit at all. You, you go on to say, Professor, that this is a violation of the constitutional right to academic freedom, which includes the right to academic research. What do you think prompted the Medical Research Council in doing this? Do you think it was afraid of upsetting the government? Well, the Medical Research Council totally misunderstood uh, everything about it. First of all, uh, Professor Gray was appointed a member of the MAC in her personal capacity. And secondly, there is nothing in the terms of reference of the MAC uh, that says that members were not to address the media um, in any shape or form. There's, no, there's nothing that prevents Professor Gray from uh, addressing the media. So the Medical Research Council, in the first instance, had no business uh, with this matter, which was actually Professor Gray acting in her personal capacity. Secondly, the Director General had no business writing to the chairperson of the Medical Research Council about Professor Gray's activities uh, in her personal uh, capacity, because that is a matter that the minister had already dealt with, and that brought that mm. matter to the end. But more alarmingly, though, is that there's an attack on the, on the integrity of a medical scientist 
just on the basis that she is perceived to be utter making utterances that are at odds with what the government has done. We are not saying she was right in what, she, in what she said. We don't know. But we said she has a right to say what she, what she did, because that is academic freedom. So my final question, Professor Petiana, then, uh, to quote you, you say that they need, or academics need to be able to research in an environment that is free from fear, intimidation, and political interference. If this has happened, what does it say, then, about the current climate of speech academic speech, and how much of a setback is this in terms of other people who have concern over government strategy voicing negative or contrary opinion? What, what I can tell, I can only refer you, Jeremy, to the president's statement uh, uh, on Sunday. And the president affirms the, the right and the integrity of scholars and academics and researchers and recognizes that there will be times when scholarship is at odds with what government is doing. And that is the nature of our democracy. We ought to be able to, to in an argumentative manner, if needs be. But that's how, in fact, we get to the root of, of matters. We find solutions. So as far as we are concerned, in general, in South Africa, there is actually no uh, um, no, no adverse climate for scholarship in this country. It is not, in fact, the case. That is the reason why we have to raise our voices when any of such appears, something that we believe that Dr. Pillay was pandering to what I can only call Stalinist notions. Dr. Barney Petiano, we are going to leave it there. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today.